for your spirit that is here. We ask, Father, for the teaching unction and for the prophetic unction to flow in this service. Let doctrine be established. Let your word come alive. Let power be granted here. Let there be transformations. Amen. Let the truth of your word be entrenched in our hearts in this meeting. Amen. Take all the glory to our Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate him. Hallelujah. Glory. You may be seated in God's presence. God bless you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is our day two of the Spirit Life Conference. Glory. And we will be taking the journey further today. And we'll go straight into God's Word. Yesterday we did establish a few things concerning the Spirit Life. We did say some things that I consider to be very profound. We established that man is spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. That God made us spirit and so we are spiritual. We established quite a number of things also yesterday. And um, I don't want to go through all of that again because we have fresh things to cover today. So the realm of the spirit is a very real realm. We looked at many things, how that what may have been discussed in the spirit will take place on the earth. The conversation about Job's life was in the spirit, but the effect of it was in the natural. So there are things that can be discussed in the spirit, but have their very natural effects in reality. We looked at man was given that we're born in the spirit, we walk in the spirit, we fight literally in the spirit. And many other things that we do in the spirit. We host the spirit of God. We have the gifts of the spirit. So our life is really spiritual. We started with that scripture concerning 2 Kings where Elisha was seen into the house of the king of Syria. And he was seeing what was going on in his bedchamber. There are spiritual realities. And so we've take, taken time out to look at this conference as spirit life. And we will be doing this by the grace of God often and often. It's not just a one-off transaction. I feel that there's so much that the Lord has given to me to say to my generation that I believe that I should put on record, I should put in videos, I should create them in conferences like this. And I hope it will be a blessing to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's commence today's session with the book of First Corinthians chapter 12. So it's a teaching experience, so please get ready to capture your notes and you know go through them carefully write down quite some things this type of teachings will help you establish doctrines they will help you ask a lot of questions so that you might be for thoroughly furnished unto every good work apostle paul said that i wish to come unto you that you might be established by the ministration of spiritual gifts so look at it in first corinthians 12 verse 1 now concerning spiritual gifts now if you notice Many scholars have taken this scripture up and I agree with them a lot that the word gift there was not there in the original transcript. So it was added. It was added somewhere there. And um, it was added somewhere there. And for what it's worth, it's worth noting that the addition gives direction to the concept of spiritual. But essentially what he was talking about there is spiritual. It says concerning the spiritual that's gifts brethren i don't want you to be ignorant that means it is possible for us to be ignorant of the spiritual that means it is possible for a man a christian a believer he called them brethren that means they were saints fellow saints to be ignorant of this world of the spirit or the spiritual world however he says i will not have you ignorant and like apostle paul said that time i'm also saying this time I will not have you ignorant. Amen. We need to understand what is going on in the realm of the spirit. There's so much going on in the realm of the spirit that we just at least even understand it. Just understand it when we come to pray. If you don't understand the power of your prayer, you won't understand what is really happening in the realm of the spirit. So much is going on in the realm of the spirit. Life is real, more real in the realm of the spirit. So we're looking at it today. They say is that. I will not have you ignorant you know that you were gentiles carried away onto these dumb idols even as you were led 
wherefore i give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of god see that so a man can be speaking by the spirit of god or be speaking by another spirit call it jesus accursed and that no man can say that jesus is the lord but by the holy ghost this scripture gives us a clear point pointer to the fact that there are two established realms in the realm of the spirit let me make it clearer there are two established realms in the realm of the spirit what we call the kingdom of god and others now others may not necessarily claim to be the kingdom of satan but they are not the kingdom of god that's why jesus said look 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 if a kingdom is divided against itself it cannot stand it's not possible a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand you need to understand that what he's saying is that kingdoms agree together so if you are to go into the if you ever had a journey to the realm of the land of the spirit so to say you will see quick quickly and easily that the realm of the spirit is represented by two major kingdoms one is the kingdom of god and the other is the kingdom of the world or the kingdom of others and i want us to please define it that way help me take care of that baby please so you see here that god's word has come to us so that he can initiate us by new birth somebody say i'm born again, I'm born again. help me say it again say i'm born again, I'm born again. Born again. help me look at your neighbor. say you are born again. born again anyone who is born of the spirit is born again let's look at that scripture john chapter 3 john chapter 3 the book of saint john chapter 3 let's look at that scripture that i referred to yesterday from verse 1 there was a man of the pharisees named nicodemus a ruler of the jews the same came to jesus by night and said unto him rabbi we know that thou art a teacher come from god for no man man cannot do these miracles that thou doest except god be with him verse 3 jesus answered and said unto him verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god nicodemus very fairly said so said unto him how can a man be born when he is old all right he says can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born you see how he's thinking like a natural man jesus answered verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit someone say water and of the spirit, water and of the spirit. so there is such a thing called being born of water and being born of the spirit so they are either of two things that's what i was saying yesterday that being, being born of water will mean being born of nature you know like i said yesterday the woman will say my water broke you know what that means it's time to give back my water do you understand what you say here so while i know some people say he's saying by be born of the word and of the spirit yes i agree but many times keep scriptures literal so that you get literal understanding yes that's my understanding of it but then i will say it's acceptable if you say be born of the word and of spirit is okay but in this context i personally and i'm not saying doctrinally so this is my understanding that is saying water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god in other words you see people can be born of spirit but they are not born of water and what he's saying is that you need to be born of nature this is important the bible says that this is how we know the realm the antichrist is there anybody that does not agree that jesus christ was born in the flesh is speaking by the spirit of antichrist so you need to understand that being born physically of flesh is important to god you are an illegitimate um, resident on the earth if you don't have a flesh this is very key so we are blessed people praise god i said we are blessed people in today's world can i hear your amen one more time so it says it says that which is of the flesh is flesh that's why I, that's why i believe that he's talking about flesh he said water is flesh that which is of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is what spirit so he's saying there are two different things i'm talking about water being flesh spirit being spirit do you get what i'm trying to say here so we are born of water praise god and we are born of spirit now verse 7 says marvel not that i said unto thee you must be born again he says the wind bloweth where it listed and thou hearest the sound thereof but cannot tell not tell whence it cometh and whither it went so is every one that is born of the spirit praise the lord look up at me one minute let me explain something to you you see just christ is giving us a picture and this is very important to what i want to share about today remember i said i was going to explain three dimensions to us one is 
man being spirit the reality of the spirit life introduction which we did yesterday so today i'm going to be speaking about what i call the spiritual realm i said i'll talk about the spiritual realm and i would begin to introduce from today the subject of transactions in the realm of the spirit i will start from today because it's very broad so i will start today this this session now titled spiritual realm and then transactions in the realm of the spirit so i want to explain that and this is life in the spirit we read yesterday the bible says that if you live in the spirit therefore walk in the spirit the word work there means take steps in the spirit take steps take strides make progress in the spirit so we live in the spirit someone say we live in the spirit in say the spirit. it's not a future tense we live right now in the spirit that's why Josh Christ was talking yesterday. He says, the, I mean, in scriptures, John 6, 63, I was saying yesterday. He said, the words that I speak to you, not tomorrow, that I'm saying now, they are spirit and they are life. So we established that there are spirits. Praise God. Everything God created. We saw in Job that there were um, the, it says the sons of God actually one translation says the spirits God created came to present themselves to God. Satan came also. Spirits. We are all spirits. Satan is spirit, you too are spirit. That's why it is insulting to think that the realm of the spirit is God and Satan fighting. That's an insult. That you think that God and Satan are fighting. Count, count, count. You, you, you. No, 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 no. If Satan were to look for a counterpart, it is us. <laughs> we are the ones that had what he came to steal from. Do you understand what I'm saying here? So it's not God in heaven fighting. We are the ones to destroy him. We are the ones to vacate him from his place. Glory to God. So we are powerful spirits, and we are not just spirits, we have, we, we have spirits that have flesh. In other words, we have legitimacy to live on this earth. The Bible says that there are clouds of witnesses looking at us. They are watching what we are doing and who we are at this time. So I'm going to be con I'm con um, make a blend from yesterday's discussion into the spiritual realm. Let's turn our Bibles once again to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. And that will help me build something today. Ephesians chapter 1. The book of Ephesians is a very major church, major book for any conversation of Christian living. But today we're going to be using it for many things. Let's look at what it says from verse 1. And then we'll read Ephesians 6 verse 12. Are you there please? Ephesians 1 from verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 3. Very popular, powerful scripture. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, somebody say who hath, say it again, say who hath, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is in Christ. So, He's saying we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings somewhere. Where, where, where are we blessed? In Christ. That means Christ is not just a person, it's a location. Oh, yeah. I wanted to see what I'm saying. Just follow me. I, I, you know, I don't want you to... I'm not here to impress you. So I really need you to just let your heart get what I'm saying. He says we have been blessed in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man be in Christ, in is different from with. In is different from around. For him to use the word in, he knows what he's saying. I was commending one of my sons upstairs when he was saying, I want to put it on. I'm saying, when I listen to people use prepositions, I sometimes feel they don't know the right one to use. It's true. But he used the right one and I was like, that's what I wanted to hear. It's true. When the Bible says in, it's not a mistake to say in again. He's telling us Christ is not just a person. He's also a location. Watch what I'm trying to show to you. So, really and truly, there is a location in the spirit that is called in Christ. That's why it says, if any man be in Christ. If you are in Christ, you are in a location in the realm of the spirit. If you are not in Christ, you are in another location. Actually, you are dislocated. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying here? So, being in Christ is the safest place to be. Outside of Christ, that word is used in Christ or in him. In him, in him, in him, in him, in him, in him, in him. When you see those words, they are speaking of us being in the Lord Jesus Christ in a spiritual location. So in that location, we have our true identity. Let's look at chapter 2. Quickly, we'll come back to this chapter 1. Quickly. Chapter 2, I just want to show you something. Chapter 2, verse 4. 
But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins. So sin is not just an action, it's a location. It's a location. And I'm going to show you something. Hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up. Somebody say raised us up. Raised us say properly, say I'm raised up. I'm raised. Watch this. Oh. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we are seated somewhere, folks. As you are seated physically here, you have a spiritual location too. Simultaneously. Folks, I'm coming here to tell you, or I'm here to tell you, that we are not just located here physically. We have a seat in Christ Jesus. We are seated. We are not standing with Christ. Standing may mean that we are waiting for something or expectant. We are seated. To be seated means that you have done the job and you are patiently waiting for something. Or you are just reigning alongside. We are seated in Christ. Glory to God. We are not walking in Christ. We are seated. We are not trying to get our place. We are seated. Is anybody seated in Christ here? Yes, Someone say, I'm seated in Christ Jesus. In Christ. Such an important information. And then he tells us, seated together with him in where? Christ. Heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Notice that. That's what is going to be my first point tonight. We are seated in Christ. And then Christ is in heavenly places. Hey, wait. So, heavenly places exist. Can we come on gradually? Now let's go back to verse 3. Watch this. Verse 3. See what it says. It says of chapter 1. Now, blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, where? In heavenly places. In Christ. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Our blessing is in heavenly places in Christ. Christ himself is in heavenly places. Now, listen to that. What that simply means is that for you to get anything of your spiritual realm is in Christ. But that Christ is not on this plane. It's in the realm of the spirits. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Now, watch this. Come with me to chapter 6. From verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Glory to God. Amen. There's such a thing called be strong in the Lord, not in yourself. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devils. Talking about spiritual warfare here. Are you there, please? And I'm coming somewhere with it. I love this. Against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let me make you see that the word heavenly places and high places are the same thing. What does this mean? That means the realm of these high places or heavenly places as the case may be. I think NIV says heavenly places. That realm of the heavenly places is where you are seated. And that's where your blessings are. So the place of your blessing, of your position in the realm of the spirit, is also the place of your warfare. So in the realm of the spirit, you are blessed here, but you're also fighting here. Heavenly places, heavenly places. The realm of the spirit comes with a clear picture that we are blessed and seated in Christ. However, we are wrestling around there. What does this mean? I thought you said Christ has finished the works. Yes. He has done the work in the realm of the spirit. But the reality, that's what we call the vitals and the reality of salvation. So what we mean by that is that legally, Christ has done the work. It is yours to now possess it vitally. Somebody say after me, say legal and vital. This is important. Let me explain it. So, in the realm of the spirit, we have a placement. We have a position. In the realm of the spirit, we are allowed to be represented. Representation is still valid even till now. So, you can go somewhere. You can send someone to represent you. In the realm of the spirit, Christ represents us. 
So he went on our behalf, just like Adam went on our behalf and sinned. Christ went on our behalf and conquered. Now, that conquest has been established in the realm of the spirit. But because we are physical spirits, in other words, we are spirits that can be seen. Do you get what I mean by that language? We are spirits that have a body, then we have to contend for the reality of what was purchased in the realm of the spirit. That's why I believe that what Christ purchased for us was not supposed to stay in the realm of the spirit. It's supposed to be converted into this earth. This is my belief. That's why we are fighting. Otherwise, in the realm of the spirit, we have conquered. In the realm of the spirit, we are victors. But we need to now make it manifest on the earth. So I have listed a few things I must quickly run through here that might help our understanding. Number one, spiritual realms have places. There's such a thing called spiritual places. Write that down. There's such a thing called spiritual places. Then we have what we call, please write that down. Places, spiritual places refers to the realm of the spirit where conversations are made. Conversations are made. There's a world in the realm of the spirit. It's called spiritual places. We have a place. It's in the realm of the spirit. Where spirit conversations are made. Spiritual. Uh, so it's because it's a spirit life or spiritual life. You also have what we call a spiritual world. So you can call it spiritual world. Now let me say this to us. This is important. Every human being you see is a spiritual entity. It's also a spiritual place. Let me explain that a bit. You see, we are a place, amen. We are a location. We too are locations in the realm of the spirit. What that means simply is that spirits can live in us. We participate in spiritual conversations. For example, the Holy Ghost has moved into our hearts. Praise the Lord. Anybody who is in Christ has the Holy Ghost resident in him. So what happens is that our mind is a place. Anything that must happen on this earth must travel through the mind of a man. So the field of the mind is called a field. You remember that's what he called it? The sower sow the word. So on the field, you remember that Matthew 13? The sower sow the seed, the seed of the word on the field. So he considers our hearts like fields. The word of God says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, guard your heart with all diligence. He says, for out of it are the issues of your life. So what he's saying there is that your mind is a space where things can be located. So there are places on this earth and there are places in the heart of a man. There are places on this earth and there are places for spirits in the heart of a man. Let me say this to us again. For a spirit to come and dwell in any other place, the atmosphere of that place must be conducive for the spirit to live. Spirits respond to atmosphere. Actually, even man responds to atmosphere. There is an atmosphere that you will stay in that will not be conducive for you to live in. It is true. So that's why the glory of God comes in the atmosphere of worship. Do you understand? When there, there's sanctity, there's purity, the glory of God can come in that environment. We need to create atmospheres where the spirit of God will be comfortable to dwell in. That song. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything. And all and all. I search me through and through. Till my heart becomes a home for you, a, a home for you. Yes, your heart can be a home for the Holy Spirit to dwell. Your heart is actually supposed to be a place for the Holy Spirit to dwell. Yet, the Holy Spirit can dwell in this atmosphere. Why? Because we make the atmosphere conducive through worship through prayer for him to dwell in the atmosphere so your heart is a place and the biosphere we see too can be a place i'll explain it let me give you illustrations for example we know the story of moses moses had a, a, a case he was walking in the in, in i mean feeding his um father-in-law's herds and his own herds as well and as he was serving 
he met a burning bush remember the story then a voice said to him he said remove the shoe you are wearing you remember what he said he said for the place you are standing is a holy ground that means there are places on this earth that are holy grounds hello there are places that are spiritual places when jesus was to see his disciples he said let's gather in galilee why didn't he meet them in judea why didn't he meet them anywhere there are places sanctified for spiritual places for spiritual experiences he says go to the place there are places there are you don't just go anywhere when god was going to take elijah why didn't he just take him he's elijah let the chariot of fire just come no for you to have spiritual encounters there are places you must go that's why i believe not everywhere on this earth is earth there are places on this earth that are spiritual you need to believe it sir you may say some people have taken it an extreme fine we don't mind the extreme but don't that doesn't cancel the truth there are places that are sanctified you can create such a place in your house an altar where you sanctify things where the shrine is is the man sanctified it for his own demons so in the realm of the spirit they know themselves we know ourselves i should say we know who is of god we know who is of darkness we interact we don't have anything to do with ourselves i mean it's amazing for me in mark chapter 5 when jesus christ saw the madman of gathering and was interacting with the spirits so we have spiritual places and god jesus looked at him and the demons could say master don't send us out they were negotiating they knew themselves they were using a human vessel but master was talking by the spirit of god amen and those, they were also responding then he said don't go okay don't send us out please and jesus honored their request <laughs> that's negotiation don't, so that tells me there are spiritual places spiritual places spirits don't just go anywhere they look for dry places let's look at it can we look at it together matthew 12 quickly please because of time we need to run so number one i'm saying there are spiritual places and i'm saying those spiritual places exist in physical territories and also in the heart of man please do you understand that point our heart is a place that's why we pull down every stronghold we cast down every imagination that's why our heart also is a warfare zone look at what it says in matthew 12 quickly verse 43 for the sake of time when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man did you see that he's gone out of a man did you see that in your bible please no. matthew 12 43 when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man he says he walketh through dry places so they are dry places seeking rest he wants to rest so they can be tired are you listening they can be tired they can be fugitives you can frustrate a demon out of a person he says and find it none so he's seeking means that he has eyes he has intelligence he has a preference why is it, is it that there are no places is that there was no property available to him every space has been occupied by the power of the holy ghost he didn't find any body who is vacant that's why it's dangerous for a christian to be without the holy ghost that's why it's not it's not right for you not to take charge of your children's life because it, those demons don't mind staying in a child that can be habited you must know that there's power for example they say when i go to mountain tops they say it often they say you are pray we are praying you you are laughing may the demon in this one not fly into your own body and it's very true sir they are looking for places to dwell when people are praying that's not the time for you to be doing your own thing checking phone Aha. they are looking for places to rest see what it says it says where is it now verse one okay for the rest and finally no verse 44 then he said i will return into my house he already takes that place as his territory he said what from whence i came from that means wherever i came out from where from whence i came out and when he is come he findeth it empty so the, there's something called the furnishing of a spirit a spirit can be furnished praise god so that when they come, they don't meet you empty what does it mean to be furnished? That's why the Bible says, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Your spirit must not be empty. Number one, your spirit must be furnished with the spirit of God. When a Christian, when they say a demon is casted out, that means he got saved. That's what we mean. He's saved from the powers of darkness. According to Colossians 1.13. Praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. 
so we are safe but then he says if he comes back and he meets the place empty empty in what sense not meeting the holy ghost not meeting the holy ghost so it's dangerous for a christian to stay without the holy ghost he says he found it empty swept the place is swept and garnished are you seeing it who does that that's the holy ghost the bible says he shall come with billowing winds billowing winds in his hands with fire remember that in luke chapter 3 yes he said so luke chapter 3 if i'm not mistaken or is it matthew 3 11 yeah yeah matthew 3 11 he says he will come with fire in his hands so we see the testimony that the spirit of god has swept the hearts clean has garnished the heart then he says then he still has time to go and call other spirits please are you seeing what i'm reading please then he quit then quit he and taken with him self seven other spirits more wicked so the realm of the spirit have gradations of character so we are seeing here the operations of this realm of the spirit he said more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first even so shall it be also unto the wicked generation listen to me please ladies and gentlemen let me remind you that it was jesus talking there if anybody is to educate us about the realm of the spirit it is this jesus hello do you agree with what i just said if anybody knows the realm of the spirit the most it's jesus guess what we cast demons out in his name <laughs> where are you going to again after jesus there's no way but this just is one telling us giving us a very powerful lecture that there is a realm of the spirit and a, a place of the spirit and i was saying that the place is both territorial and is also in the heart of man please note that number two we said here that there's such a thing called spiritual economy there's such a thing called spiritual economy there's such a thing called spiritual economy number three there's such a thing called spiritual power because it's a spirit life or spiritual life there is power in the realm of the spirit there's economy in the realm of the spirit there's wealth in the realm of the spirit there's realm in the realm of the, there's there's wealth in the realm of the spirit then we also have what i call spiritual words there is a language in the spirit praise god then we also have what we call spiritual protocol i'll try to quickly explain these things to us one after the other quickly so we said there's spiritual economy there, is, there are transactions in the realm of, I believe that a lot, a lot, ah, a lot, a lot. In the realm of the spirit, there are plenty transactions. Pastor, how do you know? I will tell you why I say so. We were told in the book of Samuel about the witch of Endor that called back the spirit of Samuel. You remember that story? That was a familiar spirit operating. In that time, the spirits were available. And because of the sacrifice of the of Saul through the witch, she invoked a spirit. Now, Bible scholars believe that that was not the spirit of Samuel, but Samuel was not in Christ. Personally, I don't have an opinion, but that's not important to me. But the spirit was enchanted. So when you look at it, you understand that though we are in this physical realm. There are things that are, are going on, conversations going on in the realm of the spirit. Look at the story of Lazarus and the rich man. The rich man was negotiating with Father Abraham. Please help me send. There was negotiation. There were conversations. There was intelligence going on. Abraham answered and said, "No, no, 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 no. If they cannot listen to the living, they will not listen to the dead." That was an intelligent response. That was an intelligent response. They were looking at it that look, 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 look. There's a level of comfort you will find in the realm of the spirit. That's why I say there's economy in the spirit. He said, look, you this man, you enjoyed on earth. Now, Lazarus is enjoying his soul. So there's a level of comfort that was differentiated. He said, there's a God that separates us. There's economy. There's buying and selling. That's what I'm saying. Let's be clearer. There's exchange. That's why Jesus said, what can a man give in exchange for his soul? He said, what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world? Do you remember that scripture now? If he gains the whole world and loses his soul. Or what can a man give in exchange? That is transaction. So it's possible for somebody to gain the whole world. How? 
economy of the spirit now what is the currency of the economy of the spirit i'll quickly explain some things to us sacrifice praise god is sacrifice if you have something to offer in the realm of the spirit they will listen to you how did a sister jay-z jay-z that was physically physical before become a, an empowered person in the realm of the spirit that our name enter bible so just to be clear we're told of this sister jay-z in the book of kings she's the same sister jay-z sister jay-z bell that's what i'm calling if you're wondering what i mean by sister jay-z Sister Jezebel now from scriptures became a witch, a very terrible one that drank the blood of priests in the book of Revelations. How did you grow to become so? You can literally give your soul to the devil. You can negotiate. So powerful that she threatened Elijah. Sir, among prophets, there are prophets. Said, if I don't put your head on a platter, and Elijah knew. That she was talking from a spiritual advantage that he was. Yes! Why? She had committed her soul at that time. This is my understanding. I may not have all the chance to explain it because I read a book that is not exactly um, something that is doctrinally approved. But you see, we, we leverage on the knowledge we have that agrees with the word of God and that does not violate the doctrine of Jesus being Christ. Please understand that. Till we get better knowledge. So if I get better knowledge, I'll be very happy to bring it out to you. But as of today, as one who has the spirit of God, I speak with authority on what I'm saying. Jezebel had already come. You see, these things were already, she spoke with a deeper authority. That's why, though you are born again, if you don't develop your stature in the realm of the spirit, a young witch can disarm you. You will say, I'm in Christ, I'm in Christ. And they will slap you and they will manipulate you. And they will deal with you. Is it because Christ is not valid? No. It is because in the realm of the spirit, there are levels, sir. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Although you are seated in Christ, but in your practical terms and your consciousness, underline the word consciousness, therefore, a man becomes more authoritative. So I've gone to spiritual authority now. Becomes, has more authority in the realm of the spirit through three major things. Please listen to this. Number one, his obedience to God. Number two, his revelation of the word and the spirit of God. And number three, his consciousness of the both. In the realm of the spirit, we operate with obedience. There is such a thing called being led by the spirit of God. There is such a thing as the spirit of God speaking to your heart. And you are drawing obedience. Jesus was talking, says, I do nothing of myself, but such as my father says to me. Are you getting what I'm saying here? So you become a, a stronger personality through, number one, your obedience. And I want you to see the word obedience as being an inconvenient word. By that, I mean your sacrifices to God. The realm of the spirit recognizes that seriously. That though you are on the kingdom of God, if somebody is more obedient than you in the realm of the spirit and is in the other realm, he will have more authority than you. Let me explain myself. We all know that the army, almost every army all over the world, are generally stronger than the police force. Am I correct? The army is instituted to protect the territorial integrity of a country. The police all over is to protect the life and properties of the citizenry. So their training is different. Am I correct, sir? Please, do you agree with what I'm saying? Yes. But do you know, do you know, that in the realm of operations, a soldier may need to salute another police officer that is superior to him. His soldier, he's strong, but his authority is not up to the policeman. And when the policeman comes, he has to salute him. And if a soldier meets the inspector general of police, I don't care whether you are the best commando, you must salute him, even though he's not, do you understand? He's not a soldier like you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because sometimes you need to be sure people are not just looking at you. Yes. Yes. So you can be an ogre in your field, in the realm of the spirit. But in the realm of the spirit, if somebody is more obedient than you, he has risen in ranks, you need to bow to him. What am I trying to say? That we are spiritual people, we must know our levels in the realm of the spirit. That's why those seven sons of Skepha, they had not obeyed. Their father was a Jew. You know, and all of that, they had a story. They had not obeyed God to that level. 
So in the realm of the spirit, they say, Paul we know. Jesus we know. Who are you? That brings me to the fourth point. Or is it the third one now? That there is such a thing called spiritual identity. Our identity in the spirit is not mouth. It's not talking. It is defined by our obedience to Christ. The sacrifice of our praise. The Bible says this is the reasonable order of service in Romans 12 verse 1 and 2. I commend therefore brethren that you should offer yourselves as living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Is it for this is your reasonable order of service. So your obedience gives you your sacrifice, sir. There are realms in the realm of the spirit. You are, you will say, why didn't it answer? But I also said in Jesus' name, it didn't answer. It is your level of obedience, sir. How do I know? Very simple. Second Corinthians 10 verse 4. It says that, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but that they are mighty through God. So in saying that, they, this, we have weapons of warfare. He said, but they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and thoughts, and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. He says, he says and, and bringing to captivity everything that seeks to exhaust the knowledge of God. He says, I'm punishing every disobedience when your obedience is complete. You can see a lady who is a, an ordinary, so, so to say, a woman, and she's stronger than you as a man in the spirit. It is the level of obedience, level of sacrifices. So spirit worlds that we are all talking, I will deal with you, I will deal with you. There are some people that are not of God, they will deal with you as a Christian. Is it because you don't have Christ? No. It is the level of authority she commands in the realm of the spirit. Though not of God, but she's superior to you in the realm of the spirit. Now hear this. Is it that she's truly superior to you? No. It is that you have not yet matched the status that will produce the level of authority you are talking about. And I said they are produced through obedience. What else did I say? Revelation of the word and the spirit. Please notice that. And then number three is the consciousness. Because you can have those two and not be conscious. And be fidgeting. You are solid, you are blessed, you are authorized, but you are not conscious. If indeed you are conscious, you need to speak with authority. That's why the Bible says, cast not away your confidence. It has great recompense of reward. Your words in the realm of the spirit carry power because of the authority that backs it up. So we don't just talk, and this is important. You see some people just say, I cast you out in the name of the You are not talking with authority. They know the voice of authority. You vow spirit out. That voice is a voice of authority. Is it wrong? You, you see Satan, I want you to go. Show. <laughs> oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God, oh God. You can't see the drama. Satan, I don't like you. have no place in this place. Satan, you don't have no place in this place. Even a child, when you scold him, he knows when you are talking authority versus when you are talking general. So the realm of our spirit is, is conducted by our authority that is produced by our consciousness. Don't forget I said obedience in the, in the light of sacrifice. Please understand what I'm saying. I said I use the word obedience not as a communion word of robots. No, it's the sacrifices. Your sacrifices. I'm saying financial sacrifices. I'm saying your heart is there. You are giving... I told of the story now of a woman that lost her baby in a service. And then the bishop that was in charge of the service just took his handkerchief like this. And without telling the pastor seated there, just threw it at the pastor. And the pastor went ahead and whisked the handkerchief on the child. Without discussion, no. And right there and then the child went, handkerchief, back to life. No discussion. <laughs> he said, if the sweat on my face will not produce results, then this work is in vain. What was going on there? That was a spiritual conversation. That was pure spiritual conversation. So I said also there's such a thing called spiritual. What are the things I've said? Please help me capture. Let me be sure. I said it according to this note. S economy. What else? No, I said economy. Authority. Uh -huh. Identity. Yes, that's where we are. And then I want you to see there that there's also spiritual intelligence. Notice I'm talking about spiritual realm now. Don't forget I told you about places. 
economy authority identity are you getting what i'm saying now there is spiritual i mean identity and then intelligence so we are speaking about identity now don't forget that, that the bible says i am crucified in christ remember that he said something like that nevertheless what i live someone says i live what does that mean there are two people talking that he's referring to there i've been crucified i live yet not i but christ that liveth in me there are two people there are two people sir you must know your identity someone says i know who i am you might not have the full revelation of it, but the more you say it, God will grant it to you. Say, I know who I am. I know who I am. The revelation of who you are is born out of whose you are. Paul said that this ship will not, I mean, it's going to crash, but the lives will be saved. He said, because of whose I am and before whom I stand. That's what he said. The angel of the Lord. Let's look at it. Acts 27. So what are you supposed to do with this information? Begin to increase your spiritual authority. Begin to exercise your faith in God. Verse 23. For there stood by me this night the angel of God... The angel of God is here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Did you see what? what what's the next word? What did he say? The angel of God. He said, whose I am and what? And whom I serve. That's what gives you spiritual identity and authority. Whose are you, sir? In other words, does God really own you or you belong to your wife? Does God really own you or you belong to your business? Whose are you? That's a very real question. Then who do you serve? Because that's the one that will give you covering. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Who you serve also is the one to make you wealthy. Remember I said something about spiritual wealth. We have such a thing called spiritual wealth. And we gather it through our stewardship with God. Now let me quickly just slide this in with regards to the spirit realm. Are we getting blessed, please? There's no intention to be over exhaustive about this in the short time we have. These are conferences that should take days, weeks, hours. Do you understand? But I hope I'm whetting your appetite for it already. Because those times will come in Jesus' name. Amen. When we have good time in the word, we're not going anywhere. We will stay basking under the fury of God's word. Let me quickly slide this in. Man has the ability to create spirits. Quote me. I don't mind. I'm, I'm teaching my revelation. Praise God. Man, and I've said this before, if you remember. Man has the ability to create spirits. I will tell you why I say so. Pastor, how do you say so? How can man create spirits? I will tell you. Every spirit that God made was good. Praise the Lord. Every spirit. What God did in creation of man was a recreation of creation <laughs> watch this <laughs> now the power behind that is this god from what we know of him checks his record if what he has done is good or not am i correct and even when he made man he, his Bible says he went back to check if man was good then he said he looked at him and saw that man was good now listen to this the part i want to draw to your attention to is that so every spirit was already made for a good cause for example, man today, we know we have something called the spirit of pornography. Do you agree? Eh? There's a spirit of mass.
Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Quick, let me deliver the thoughts. And I want to try to close with this and the next one. Quickly. So I said, man has the ability to create spirits. And I said, for example, masturbation. Masturbation can become a spirit. Well, long and short, write this down. Every mistake, every reoccurring mistake can become a habit. Every reoccurring mistake. Every reoccurring mistake. You remember what I say is that God is not tempted by evil. He said, but every man is tempted not by the devil, but by his own lust. The things he enjoys. James 1, 12, 13. So he did not say every man is tempted by the devil. No. Every man is tempted by his own lust. Not the devil. So every reoccurring mistake facilitated by man's lust or preference can become a habit. Every reoccurring habit has a spirit assigned to it. I get what I'm trying to say here. The re occurrence of a tendency in a man is called a habit. The reoccurrence of a tendency in a man is called habit. When it becomes a community, it becomes culture. The difference between habit and culture is the population that responds to it. So you can say, this man has respect. Or you can say, this community has respect. Why? The tendency that is repeated in a cluster of people can be considered to be a culture. And behind every culture are spirits. Now notice this. The spirits that attend to individuals are different that, from the spirit that attend to territories. So we have territorial spirits and we have individual spirits. Now this learning is not to make you afraid of the realm of the spirit, but to let you know what your level of authority is as a Christian. That in God, you should strive for mastery in the realm of the spirit. Praise the Lord. That though you are located in the realm of the spirit safely in Christ, you are supposed to grow your capacity in your experience as a spirit being. We are supposed to grow our spiritual capacity. We have not yet fully grown. This is important because our journey in Christ requires this stewardship we are doing. Service. Service is one major thing that bestows upon you crowns. Glory to God. Soul winning makes you useful to the kingdom of God. I will listen to what I'm saying here. Obedience. When God can trust you with obedience, it increases your level of authority. Huh. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 6. Having readiness to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. So obedience gives us credence in the realm of the spirit. God can entrust you. Why? Disobedience made Saul lose his throne. Obedience made David get his own. That's how it works. Obedience. Now, some characteristics of the realm of the spirit that you want to know is that there are spiritual protocols. There are certain things that you don't do in the realm of the spirit. Number one, in the realm of the spirit and for an effective spiritual life, sacred things are taken sacredly. Ability to recognize sacred things. What is sacred? Blood is sacred. In Luke in Leviticus 17.21, it says the life of the flesh is in the blood. No, that's not twenty one seventeen. Oh man, I miss that scripture. It says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Oh yes, I'm sure it's Leviticus something. 
I want to read it out to our hearing. The life of the flesh is in the blood. 17 what? 11, not 21. I'm sorry, please. For the life of the flesh. Thank you very much. I need 17. I, I guess I mixed 21 for 11 there. Or 11 for 21. So, the realm of the spirit, blood is sacred. Praise God. I said blood is sacred. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, the quality of blood you use in the realm of the spirit will determine the quality of response and power you generate in the realm of the spirit. This is why I personally believe that some of the realms of the spirit are gathering human parts. I personally, notice the word personal. When it is personal, I have a right to my opinion. When it is scriptures, I tell you it is scriptures. When it is not, when it is personal, I will tell you it is personal. So every other thing is scriptures. It's only the personal ones I will highlight. All this gathering of human parts, why are they gathering? Do you really believe it's true? It's very true. Why will a human part exchange for value on the earth? There is a reason. There is a reason. And I will not go into that today. Lest it sound like <laughs> some people that are talking on social media to get popularity. I'm not looking for that. God forbid. But I'm saying that there, there, there are reasons. And I studied something that makes me say what I'm saying. I have an observation from scriptures that seems to point to why human part is useful and valuable. That's why you don't just bury your body anyhow. Any smart person knows that when you have your hair, you don't just throw your hair anyhow, anywhere. Just by the strand of that hair, we can check your DNA. Just by a strand of hair. There must be something about our past that is precious. Yes. Yes. I can tell you, the parts of the body are never really decimated. They are in the soil as codes. Then the soil has codes with the right words, they will gather to the right bone. So they're not gone anywhere. The flesh looks dematerialized, they know where they belong. Everything is a code. At resurrection, you will see everything come together. It's all lost. So you just say it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. How am I do my body? Who told you that? That's why you need to get your healing now. Because it's here. In the realm of the spirit, you can still be walking crippled. So I'm saying these things because I want us to become alive. And if you underscore my last point there, conscious. Someone say conscious. conscious. Our consciousness in the realm of the spirit is what makes the realm of the spirit come alive to us. For example, when you come and say, this place, I dedicate it to the Lord. It's consciousness. It's con it was just an ordinary place before. This spoon. Some people took a stone and started to become conscious of the stone. Yeah. Just one day, they just saw a stone. This stone, I like the way it's looking. It's now my God. And it becomes a God. And then when they ask for things, a spirit is assigned to support them. So I'll close with this line. In the realm of the spirit, we are critically being watched. We are being monitored. We are being monitored. It's such a very practical thing. And every element of creation is an instrument to control human beings. You hear some people say, unless the person is not standing on, this, on the ground. Have you ever heard such words? It's very true. <laughs> that he, unless this is not moving on, or unless it's not born of a woman. Those words are very powerful. They are not ordinary. Do you understand what I'm saying here? The realm of dreams also bring us to a realm of subconsciousness. Am I making some sense? That's why the real person who is powerful is the person who is, is conscious in his subconscious. The person you want to really know that is powerful is a man that is conscious in his subconscious. I was telling you the other day, by the message of God, yes, sir. that yes, sir. I was in a dream, something happened, and I went back to the beginning of the dream. I started the dream again. Yes. To my taste. I corrected it. Yes. I will share the testimony one very soon. Very clear. Uh, it's done. I did not like the way it went. I went back and corrected it. Glory. I said I said it in your presence. I didn't know I would teach this teaching. It's very real. Your consciousness. So some people you see that their subconsciousness, they've not let Christ dwell there. The joke has been said in this ministry how a brother, his hand touched the fan. Bah! And shouted, Songo. You see, you see. 
what what i i personally even don't believe he was worshiping songo maybe he has been too jokula about this word and that was what came out i don't think he was a worshiper of song i don't think so but it is what's in you that comes out praise the lord Hallelujah. i get i'm trying to say here so some of us take this thing more seriously take it more seriously it doesn't matter whether you're in the choir the devil doesn't regard that at all what he wants is your location in the realm of the spirits and how conscious you are our sacrifice of praise our sacrifice of worship makes our realm of the spirits have more meaning when we don't do these things we lose grounds in the realm of the spirits your sacrifice your giving remember that story we were speaking about the other day about the king of moab that sacrificed his son solomon killed a thousand cows a cows or whatever god visited him <laughs> not an angel there must be something that that did god of the heavens and the earth visited him <laughs> sir are you getting what i'm trying to say there so it's real and i'm only inviting us from tonight to become more conscious what do you need? What are the things from your heart? Especially because the Bible says that Solomon loved the Lord and he gave that from love. The Bible says God loved cheerful givers. I mean, you can't give me that. God not stay in heaven. He said, look, we are not, we are, there's no sleep tonight. And appeared to him in a dream. It was a dream. But he took it. It was a reality. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Mary was a dream. Appeared to me. May God show himself to you. God swore concerning Abraham and that swear was that you will be rich that you will have a child may God swear over you in the name of Jesus Christ now let me make it clearer God has sworn over us we have responsibilities now there's a realm that we need to walk that out into our it says walk out your salvation with fear and trembling the other day I was telling us about prayer one prayer I wanted to give us as a gift and maybe someone was expecting that I would say you buy a cow and I said may you be able to fear God again it's a missing value in Philippians 2 he says that walk out your salvation with fear and some of us don't have fear of God again and it's a missing value listen to me if you don't fear God you will fear life Yoruba say and the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear because fear is a currency in the spirit realm and it must produce something what are you afraid of it is proof of your distance from the knowledge of God's word so tonight we we'll stop here you need to be interested in increasing your spiritual worth you have worth in the spirits praise God that needs to start to bear semblance in the physical all this protracted praying all this fasting all these things give us worth praise the lord tomorrow for example we'll continue our prayers from 12 to 6 p.m and we'll have service in, the, in by evening your worth in the realm of the spirit is determined by your worth in terms of your sacrifice in the spirit how do i know that galatians 6 he says that do not be deceived god is not mocked whatsoever a man sows he shall reap he says for he that sweat to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that sweat to the spirit shall what of the spirit reap life everlasting glory to god galatians 6 verse 7 and 8 so you will reap life everlasting that life everlasting is not just talking about eternal life he's talking about the quality of god's life on earth he that sweat to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption when you are thinking like the flesh remember we said yesterday that the flesh and the spirit don't go together that they are enmity against each other in Romans 8, it says, If we through the Spirit mortify the deeds of the flesh, then we shall live. Verse 13. So you need to take yourself seriously, demarcate your spirit man from your flesh. And I believe that it will be well with you. Can we just bow our heads in prayer tonight and just begin to talk to God and say, Father, grant me grace, O God, to be able to put to use what I've heard. I receive great grace from tonight. Are you there tonight? Begin to talk to God. 
Say, Lord, I receive grace. Can we talk to God tonight? Your grace and your level in the realm of the spirit is rising tonight. You are growing in the realm of the spirit. You are not just an ordinary person anymore. You are rising in the realm of the spirit. Who is talking to God tonight from this teaching? Can you make sense out of this conversation? Or it's going to make sense out of you? Can you open up your mouth and talk about it to God? And say, Father, I receive great grace tonight to walk in the fullness of your power upon my life. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Come on, talk to God tonight and say, Father, I receive great grace tonight. I receive great grace tonight to rise up in the realm of the spirit like a stronger person. I am stronger in the realm of the spirit. I receive capacity in the realm of the spirit. I grow in the realm of the spirit. I become authorized in the realm of the spirit. I am furnished unto every good work. I am not available for darkness. I am loaded. I am not empty. Hallelujah. The Bible says that that spirit comes back and when it means you empty. No, say I'm not empty. I am loaded in the spirit. I am loaded in the spirit. I am empowered in the spirit. I am authorized in the spirit. I am wealthy in the spirit. And I bring it into the physical. I introduce it into the physical. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I said in Jesus' name we pray. You know, I said to us that there are things in the realm of the spirit. For example, there's security in the realm of the spirit. Our angels are our security. The word of God says that the angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him. And they deliver them. Angels. Angels. They encamp round about them and deliver. Angels stood on the mountains waiting for Elijah's instruction. Elijah's instructions. Jesus said, look, my kingdom is not of this world. And my servants are not here. He said, if you just, they would have delivered me from you. John 18, 36. So we are seeing here that, look, if you all you see is the realm of the physical, you are not in spirit. You are not spiritual. Praise the Lord. Now, your access to the realm of the spirit is your choice. Once you choose to go in the realm of the spirit, the first access are your words. For example, in the place of prayer, when you enter the realm of the spirit through prayer, you are moved from the physical. You are still standing here, but you are communicating with the spirit world. Tonight, I want us to lift up our voice and do something practical here. Tomorrow, we'll be talking about translation from the realm of the spirit, bringing things to the physical. But I want us to do something here. I want you to pronounce that Jesus is my Lord in the realm of the spirit. I want you to find yourself located in Christ. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? I want you to lay claims on the purchase of the blood. I want you to declare that the blood of Jesus Christ is active and valid for you. Intelligently, lift up your voice and let's make some prayer in here right now. Can you open up your mouth and pray and say, Father, thank you for giving me grace to be in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the blood that was shed up for me upon the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Father, for the blessedness of being in Christ. I declare you are my Lord and my Savior. I declare that you are my authorized Savior. Hallelujah. I have no other God but you. I declare that you alone are my God. I refuse every mistake that wants to become a habit. Every habit that wants to become a spirit, I cast it down this evening. I declare that it shall not prosper. Lord, in this territory, we declare that Jesus alone is Lord. In this life, we declare that Jesus alone is Lord. Thank you, precious Father, for your grace. Thank you, Father, for your blood. Your blood that has given us life. Your blood that you shed for us upon the cross of Calvary. The blood of atonement, glory to God. That has made us one back with God. Thank you, Father, for grace. Thank you, Father, for life. In Jesus' name we pray. Can I hear your believing? Amen.